First, what even is machine learning exactly? Well, it's actually not that different than how a kid learns. You ask them a question like, what is this? And they come up with an answer based on what their brain tells them is most likely. If they're right, we'll reward them. And if they're wrong, we'll punish them and they'll improve for next time. But how does the brain or a computer even make a guess on what something is? Well, we can think of it like this. Let's say you're trying to tell the difference between a gold party balloon and a tree. So a kid or a computer can think, how green is it to differentiate it? As we can see here, this is a one-dimensional space because there's only one axis, but we can tell the difference between the gold party balloon and the tree. But now let's make it a green balloon and a tree. Now we can't differentiate them based on our one axis, so we need another variable which can be roundness. Now we're up to two dimensions and we're pretty good because we can tell the difference between the two. But with more data, there could be a tree that's round and a balloon that's not. So in this case, our brain or the machine learning model will have to add another factor, maybe let's say shininess, as balloons usually have a shiny spot and trees don't. Now, as we can see, we're at a three dimensional space. And with just these three dimensions, a kid and a computer can determine trees from balloons pretty well. But now let's say for differentiating a ton of different images and objects, we're gonna need more variables. When training an AI model, we're asking it a question and telling it if it's right or wrong. Each time, there's a ton of variables within the model that will be tweaked in order to help it improve on the task next time. And how it does this is with a process called gradient descent. Basically what it does is it uses a math equation called an objective function that will change the internal numbers in the right direction to make a more accurate guess next time. All these variables create a space that has way more than three dimensions, and the human brain can't even picture a space with this many dimensions. With this, a trained AI model can describe what's in any picture based on its previous training. And yeah, that's pretty much how machine learning works. But now we want to generate images, right? And all of this depends on something called stable diffusion. It's an algorithm that can turn a picture full of noise into an HD image of whatever you describe in text. So how can we do this? First, we have to train our model. Let's start with like an image of a dog. Then let's add a bit of random noise to it 10 times. So we have an image of a dog and we add some noise and then we add some noise until we end up with an image that just looks like pure static. And now the big idea here is to train the AI to be able to remove all of this noise to get back to the image of the dog. So at each time step, we're gonna be asking our model to predict the noise added and then tell it if it was right or wrong with the correct noise. Each time, the model is going to train its multi-dimensional space as we talked about before in order to get better each time. And if you train it for long enough on a ton of images, it's going to get super good at guessing the noise added at each state. Okay, now this part is actually pretty cool. If the AI can guess the noise added at each state, then it can take out that noise in order to get back the original image. This is exactly what we're going to do, and it's called sampling. Let's say the AI is trying to produce an image of the same dog that looks like this. We'll give the AI a completely noisy image and predict the noise of one time step. We're going to subtract that noise from our image, and we're still going to have a super noisy image, but it's a little bit less noisy, like maybe there's an outline of a dog now. It's also not going to be perfect because it's a prediction. So what the algorithm does is add back a little bit of noise and then feeds it back into our AI. We just keep doing this over and over again. And if you can imagine, each time more noise is being removed than added at each step. So eventually it's gonna get closer and closer to the dog until it's the actual image of the dog. Okay, but right now the AI still doesn't know what kind of image to make. There's no guidance yet, so it's just gonna create random images, but that's what the text prompt is for, and this is something called tokenization. For the AI to turn text into an image, it's pretty much the same thing. We first train a model on an insane amount of data of pictures with text embeddings describing the photo. We would need terabytes of training data to do this ourselves, which we don't have, but luckily there's models online that do, and we can use them. One's called Clip and it's the most famous one. And after all of the training on their data set, it can turn text prompts like dog on the beach into some values in the multi-dimensional space that would accurately represent a dog on the beach to a computer. And then this information will guide our denoising to get the generated image. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Really, if you just wanna remember one thing is that we're going from text to images with denoising. Ah, God, what a grind.